Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God. My name is Pastor Ken, and this morning we're going to continue our Bible study on the Sermon on the Mount. So if you want to get all of your tools ready, uh, if you want to see the notes, click on the notes section in the lower left-hand corner, and the notes will pop up. And so get your Bible, get your pen, get your notebook, and uh, get your bottle of water or your cup of coffee, and let's start our lesson. We are in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 6, and then verses 16, 17, and 18. Our title today is, How Not to Be Religious. So let's get started. Question number one, do not conform to the world. Jesus taught a lot on that subject. In fact, when the Apostle Paul would write the book of Romans, he wrote to us in Romans chapter 12, in verse number two, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Now, conformed in what we're looking at this morning is don't take the shape of uh, several years ago, uh, in uh, one of the houses that we were living in, it had a central floor furnace. And when the heat came on, on top of that register, it was like, oh, about two feet wide and four feet long in, in the floor. And when that heat came on, that register got quite warm. And one of our children left a, a toy on top of that uh, register. And when the heat got done with it, that little wheel on that toy, toy wasn't round anymore. It looked like the register. And uh, so that we don't want to take the shape of the world. And that's what Jesus was teaching. And then the Sermon on the Mount has a lot to do with don't take the shape of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, sometimes people just did what they wanted to do. And then sometimes they tried to live out the rules of the religious leaders. So we need to be careful we are not trying to conform to either one. In other words, let's not conform to a lifestyle of living however we feel like, whatever we feel like at the moment. And let us not try to be like somebody else that Oh, they have a list of things that they do and don't. And, or, you know, one time one of our children said, uh, Dad, we don't do this because the church says not to, right? And I said, well, it doesn't work like that. We don't do that because we feel that that would not be pleasing to the Lord. So it's, it's very hard when we're trying to do something because someone or some group thinks we ought to do that. So we need to be careful. We're not to, trying to conform to either one of those lifestyles. We need to follow Christ. It does kind of fall into that. Uh, remember that saying from many years ago? It was WWJD, what would Jesus do? And so this is in the Sermon on the Mount. That's a lot of things. What would Jesus do? Now, question number two. The world sometimes accuses Christians of being hypocrites. And if I were to sit here this morning and tell you, oh, that's not true. Christians are not hypocrites. Well, I would have just said a false statement. This is too often true. Now, but because some Christians are hypocrites, should we abandon Christianity? Think about that. If if I go to the store and I get a dozen eggs and one of those eggs uh, happens to have gone by, uh, should I say, don't buy eggs ever again in your lifetime? No, you, we recognize that sometimes you'll get a bad egg. And so we, we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. 
We should not blindly try to be religious, okay? We shouldn't be doing stuff just because the pastor says it or the church says it. We must allow our faith to impact our hearts. So it's when our head gets into our hands. So we believe it, and then we start living it. So Jesus is teaching us here this morning, we must always guard against being hypocritical. You know, if, if someone were to uh, buy a car and uh, then the, the car died, uh, does that mean that we never buy cars again? No, it, it just means that something happened and let's deal with what happened. Now, in our example here this morning, in our passage of Scripture that we're looking at, in Matthew chapter 6, if you want to open your Bible there, if you haven't done so already, Jesus talks about three practices, and they are specifically here, giving, praying, and fasting. Now, let's read uh, the text. Be careful, verse number one, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others. Now, that word practice, someone might get the idea that we're just putting on an act, like we're playing a part, we're practicing for a play. But it, no, no, the things that we do, it's our practice. Okay, this is, this is what our pattern of living is. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do practice your righteousness, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. I like to say in a situation like this, if you've done that and you've practiced your righteousness in front of others, instead of getting a reward in heaven, you'll get a receipt. The Lord will say, you already got your reward for that. So let's pick up verse number two. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is is doing so that your giving may be see, may be in secret then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you now some of the in images uh, here are are sort of laughable okay in the in the sense that uh, he says when the hypocrites when they pray don't be like the hypocrites that when they pray they like to be seen they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their full reward in full. One time I heard about a person that they had an accident. They bumped into the car in front of them. And when the police officer got there, they said, well, I, I was just uh, talking. I was praying and uh, I just was so enthralled with my prayer that I just closed my eyes and put my hands up. Uh, that's a real poor uh, reason for having an accident. And so can you imagine someone calling attention to their giving or praying? He, he said some of them here, he said they, they keep on babbling like pagans they think it will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. He says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it may not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father. Who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you so he's saying don't sound a trumpet to let everybody know you're giving this or you're you're praying now i am sure if you've been in the church long enough you're familiar with those who love to get credit for doing things jesus warns us not to be like them 
Okay, it's a great warning here this morning. Question number four. Some want to be seen doing their good deeds. They don't really care for those they are helping. They just want to be seen helping. I think we call that today a photo op. Uh, sometimes near elections, we will see politicians and they will be doing great things like working in a soup kitchen or handing out Thanksgiving baskets. And Well, Jesus is saying anybody can do that sort of thing. But what really matters is what you do when nobody is watching. So Jesus told us not to expect a reward if our motive is to simply be seen by others. This is calling on us to examine our motives for doing good things. And Jesus was not saying we should not give. He was not saying we shouldn't pray. And he was not saying that we shouldn't fast. But he was saying, what is your motive for doing that. Question number five, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And so this involves secrecy. It involves discretion. This involves not calling attention to yourself or those who benefit from your generosity. Now, ultimately, when you look at this, my brain is one, okay? Well, aside from left brain and right brain, and okay? But I'm one person. And so if my left hand is doing something, my right hand is going to know about it. However, when Jesus is talking here, this is how secret our giving should be. Uh, you know, when you're putting something, like in Jesus' day, people that were begging, they'd have a cup or a bowl and... Uh, you know, he's saying to quietly drop something in there. Don't put your hands up and pray. And don't call attention. Don't blow a trumpet. Don't take both hands and, you know, but just drop something in there. See, none of us like to be embarrassed. This is true of the one receiving, and it's true of the one that's giving. You have a need. You don't, you don't want everybody else to uh, know what people may be helping you out with. You, you know, you, there is, we want to save face as much as we can. Now, giving, you know, this is between you and the Lord. So we should be giving people. We should be generous. We should, uh, we should be touched by people's needs and we should respond. Years ago, we had uh, some kids that were going on a missions trip, and the kids knew about this for uh, a year or two because they were planning, saving money. And so we were at uh, one of our uh, functions, and uh, some kids from another church that we knew, uh, they asked me, Pastor Ken, will you support me? Pastor Ken, will you support me? And so I told them, I said, yes, you send me your... Uh, letter of appeal and uh, I will do something for you and uh, so uh, a few months later we were at another uh, district event and so when the kids came up and they said oh pastor Ken thank you for sending me some money to help and I've reached my goal well one of the other kids that was there says pastor you didn't send me anything and I said hmm let me see did I get a letter from you asking for support? No, I didn't send a letter out. Hmm, I think you're supposed to send a letter out, aren't you? And uh, so uh, when they got home after that uh, meeting, they sent me a letter and sure enough, Pastor Ken sent them uh, some support. And so we don't want to embarrass uh, each other uh, but we do have a part that each one of us has to play. This speaks to anonymously meeting the need. And uh, the Heavenly Father is watching what we do. Question number six. We may be tempted by the praise given to those 
who are generous. Remember the lesson from Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts? And they got the eyes on the praise of men and it led to their downfall. We may like it when people say, oh, that was a good prayer. You know, maybe after church people say, oh, that was a great prayer. And our, you know, <laughs> our flesh is tickled by that. We may want people to know we are giving or know that we are praying or fasting. These are three things that Jesus talks about here. Jesus said to do these things quietly and not for show. What is your motive? Now, that goes against our human nature. We want people to show appreciation for our good nature. Now, that's not, that's not evil. It's simply courteous to one another. Someone does something nice for you, we want to say thank you. Someone holds the door for you, we want to say thank you. We like to show our appreciation. And we want others to show that same courtesy back to us. Now, question number seven. Praying just to be heard, it is hypocritical. It's not how we fold our hands. It's not how we lift our hands. We bow our head and pray. Okay, it's not our position. Praying is, all of those things are on the outside. What is the attitude of our heart? Now, praying just to be heard is hypocritical, but God still hears the prayer. Can't, he can't ever, quote, really not hear us. He will not withhold his blessing from the needy on account of our hypocrisy, okay? He's not going to withhold, uh, but we are liable to be mocked. People, will, people can tell if you're being hypocritical. People can see through that. If, if you're only praying to be seen, people, you know, people see that stuff. And, but, uh, the Lord is not going to uh, not bless somebody because we were hypocritical. That is just beyond belief that God would withhold his blessing because of our hypocrisy. Question number eight. We are not heard by how loud we pray. Okay. You remember in the story of Elijah when he challenged the prophets of Baal and uh, the prophets of Baal hollered and screamed and jumped and did all kinds of things. We're not heard because of how loud we pray. We're not heard because of our eloquent prayer. Some people have a great vocabulary. They have a large, they have a, they, they know a lot of, we used to call them 50 cent words years ago. Uh, but that's just how they regularly speak. We're not heard because of the length of our prayer. We don't have to pray great, big, long, long, long prayers. In fact, right in the middle of the verses that I read this morning in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer as a pattern of how we ought to pray. So our pride may get in the way of our giving or our praying or our fasting. It certainly got in the way of the people that Jesus is describing in Matthew chapter 6. We may want others to give or pray or to fast, but we need to be careful that our pride doesn't get in the way of all of these good works. Our prayers are to be like talking to a friend. Our prayers are not to try to impress others. Our fasting should not be evident to others. Remember, Jesus talks about here saying, don't distort your face. Oh, I'm fasting. Okay. We should not be obnoxious with any one of these spiritual activities of giving or praying or fasting. Uh, I, from pastoring for over the years, I've heard so many things. And uh, one time someone told me, they said, Pastor, I put $2 in the offering this week, and I don't want to see you next week 
wearing a new tie. Well, let's see. Uh, I pastor the church, and the church gives me a salary. Where do you think the salary comes from? The salary comes because you put money in the offering. And so you pay me a salary, and I, not, I need a new tie. Guess what I'm going to buy? I'm going to buy a new tie. And so, theoretically, I could be buying a tie with your two dollars. Well, probably at Goodwill I could buy a tie for two dollars. Uh, but the point is, sometimes people, they get real strange things what they think. Sometimes people think that when they, you know, give to the church that that now entitles them to, to direct what the church does, what the church doesn't do. And that's not the way it's supposed to work. We shouldn't say, I can't buy this because I gave too much to the Lord. You know, we're out shopping and uh, I'm going to buy a jacket and you're with me. And they say, oh, I could never afford to buy a jacket because I pay my tithes and or I gave money to the Lord. If you choose to uh, give to the Lord, then you leave that between you and the Lord and you don't. You don't say anything about that to anybody else. Nor should you say, I can't eat with you because I'm fasting. If you are fasting, and then so you make a decision. When I'm, when I'm fasting, I don't put myself in a position where I'm going to be tempted to eat. Uh, so, but you don't have to make everybody else feel like they are not doing something spiritual and that you are so don't call attention to these spiritual things that the lord is talking about question number 10 the reward of giving praying and fasting he talks about that the reward is going to be in heaven it will be a surprise to us we did not do it to receive a reward but our father in heaven he takes notice and jesus says here He's going to give us a reward for doing these righteous things. Now, question number 11. This is our last question this morning. The Old Testament used fasting as a memorial for something God had done. So during feast days, festivals, sometimes they were a week long, there would be either leading up to it or in the middle of it, there would be a fast. And so the people would not eat during that particular time. Or the fasting may be for uh, a particular food item. In other words, during that period of time, they may not have eaten sweets. Or during that period of time, they didn't eat bread with yeast in it. They only ate unleavened uh, bread. And so it was a memorial to the Lord. Sometimes fasting was used as a way to show sincerity of repentance, that they you know, turned from their wicked ways and they denied themselves food for a period of time to show their sincerity. It was used as a way to gain the Lord's favor. Perhaps if we uh, fast and pray and show that we are changing our ways, maybe God will bless us. Some had reduced these things of giving and praying and of fasting. That if I do these things, like if I fast, I get my prayer answered. That's Jesus was speaking against that too. When we pray, we're not praying just to receive. Yes, I have a need, and so I'm telling the Lord my need. But I'm not praying just so that I get my need met. The Lord is omnipotent, and he is sovereign. And the Lord knows what to do and when to do it and how to do it. He, Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father. Our Heavenly Father knows what is best for us. And the Lord may not 
choose to bless us with that. It, he may have other things in mind for us. And so just like our heavenly, or just like our natural father, if I tell my father, give me this, and if you don't, then you're not my father. Well, nothing is ever going to change that he's my father. In the same way with the Lord, we don't fast or pray just to get. And if I don't get it, you're not God. No, that's not the way that it works. So Jesus was talking about our motives here. And may our motives be pure before the Lord. Well, thank you for stopping by this morning. We trust that this has been a blessing to you. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, help us as we practice our righteousness. Ultimately, Lord God, our righteousness is as filthy rags. And so when we talk about righteousness, it's from you. And so when we practice our faith, when we practice our Christianity, when we practice our righteousness, may it truly come from a blessing in our heart and not to be seen by people. So we pray, Lord, that we help us to examine our motives. We do pray, Lord, for those that are sick today. We ask, Lord, you would minister to them and strengthen them. We pray, Lord, you would keep us safe. Watch over us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We hope to see you in the house of the Lord tomorrow. Take care.